<laughs> Hello, riders or not? That is Neo, my dog. And you know what that means? He is not in the UK. That means that I am in Lithuania. And today I will be talking about riders but not. <laughs> Just like I am at the moment. It's been over 50 days since last time I rode a motorcycle. Last week on Instagram and here in the shorts, I posted a little confession of me not riding for 45 days. Hello everyone, my name is Dimente, don't worry a bit, and I haven't rode a motorcycle for 45 days. And I got that ginormous feedback. People who are bikers, who are riders, and who are motorcyclists in their heart, they live and breathe motorcycles just like me. For some reason, they can't ride. And if you are a lucky one who can ride every single day, we all congratulate and envy you. But if you are not, please share the reason with us in the comments why you're not riding and how you cope with it. That is the most important. Do you remember my parents' beautiful garden? Wait a minute. <laughs> that is what it is now. A bit different, isn't it? <laughs> so as you can see, it is winter here in Lithuania. Even more winter than it is at the moment in UK. But those of you who are watching my vlog for quite a while, you know that this is not the reason why I'm not riding. Because I used to ride all year round, any weather, even at the worst weather conditions. Not intentionally, it's not much fun to ride when it's snowing, for example, and it's way too dangerous, especially on a sports star. But this year, the situation is different. On the first episode in Thailand, I told you guys that since I came back from Lithuania last time, I got COVID. I got very ill and I was still poorly for months, for half a year. So one of the reasons why I came to Lithuania is to visit the doctors and have loads of tests done to find out what is wrong with me. And just like I presumed, I have what they call long COVID or chronic fatigue syndrome. And this is the main reason why I haven't been riding for 50 days. Is it slippery? Is it not nice? Is it cold here? Is it cold and slippery and not nice? It's winter. It's not that much fun, isn't it? It's not that much fun. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Get in. You don't want to go inside. Come on. <laughs> What helps me coping, first of all, is the hope. Every single day, I have a hope that I might write today. If not today, then tomorrow. And that is how 50 days passed. Only just like that. If I would know that I will not write for other 50 days, I would go mad. I would literally go mad. But waking up every single day and thinking maybe today will be a day, except from, of course, very busy days when I have everything planned or I go to Simon's, I go to Mint Customs or when I had a flight to Lithuania, I know I will not ride that day, but I still have a belief that maybe after tomorrow I will have that chance. And that is one of the things that helps me cope with not riding. It was one day before Christmas and New Year, then it was a good day to ride. The weather was good, the salt was washed out, and it wasn't minus degrees, it was plus outside. I dressed up, I was feeling all right that day to ride, and I went outside, I took my Harley outside, and it didn't start it. <laughs> so I missed my opportunity. I didn't get mad, I had to take the battery out because I don't have electricity in my garage. Thanks to Mint Customs and my experience with Simon and all his lessons, it took me less than five minutes to take the battery out. And it's still in my sitting room since, charging. 
it charged like in a couple of days but then the cold weather started or some days i was feeling very poorly and i wasn't able to write just like that it dragged to such a long period but like i said having a hope it really helps me to cope and I spoke with people who had an accident or people who are like me having some illnesses or some chronic illnesses that not allow them to write every single day. Still, when they have this hope of soon, maybe. When the first time I had an opportunity to work on the bike, I realized after that day that I felt exactly the same as if I were riding all day. I had exactly the same satisfaction, exactly the same feeling, exactly the same clear mind, and I didn't miss riding at all that day. And this is probably the best what you can do if you are not able to ride and that is what most people do if you are not able to ride and really really miss it consider to go and fiddle something on your bike and even if you don't have any knowledge just like i did when i started there are some things that you can definitely do like get your bike ready for winter or go and check it go check the battery maybe clean it maybe decide to customize something even if it is a small thing i promise you you will have satisfaction on working on your bike and it will make you miss riding less Most of my big trips, I was riding alone. And I really enjoy riding for myself and riding by myself. But still, riding a motorcycle, it's a lot about the community for me. So being able to keep that, to keep talking with people who talk about motorcycles, that is one of the other coping techniques that I'm using to cope without riding. So I'm thinking when I'll come back to UK to find a place where I will do a meeting and people who are willing to come and just chat to like-minded people. And if you can come on the bike, you can come on the bike. If you want to come in the car, you can come in the car because the weather is still very cold in UK. Or if you are not able to ride and you just want to be around motorcycles and there's not that much happening in UK at the moment. I was looking for some event and it's nothing happening because it's not motorcycling season but still season or not we are in our hearts a motorcyclists and we want to be involved and we want to be around bikes and you are maybe lucky like I am and like brains and bear are lucky to come to Mint Customs and have this and Mount Club on Mondays and talk about motorcycles or talk about life but maybe you are not and maybe the only time you communicate with other riders are when you are riding so maybe consider to just call everyone and say like look guys let's go somewhere let's go and have time to have a cup of tea let's go to the place where we normally go to the coffee shop or to motorcycle place and just chat about motorcycles. I am sure that will make you feel better. Coming back to that meeting, if you have any suggestions and you are local to Essex and you know a good place where I can organize it, let me know because I'm really considering that and maybe even considering to make it regular meetings so I can be closer to you guys. And if you don't have a chance to go and meet somewhere, we are lucky to live in technology era. We are lucky and unlucky at the same time. But we are lucky that we can communicate with people all around the world. And I do have some friends that I never met in real life, but we became very good friends because we have many things in common. And one of those friends lives in Scotland and him being one of the realest bikers I ever met in my life. Living and breathing motorcycles is not able to ride now for a few years. And I'm just about to arrange a call to him and ask him how does he cope with not riding. Yo, dog. So the first question I have is to tell everyone why are you not riding? I had some health problems and I'm diabetic. 
and diabetics get a driving license four years at a time and you always have to renew every four years. I was going through some crazy horrible health stuff um, at the time that I needed to renew my license. Scary eye stuff, scary vision stuff. I had to lose some vision to keep my vision. It was honest to God, um, looking like I was going to go blind. But we caught it just in time. Thank God. And I'm left with imperfect vision in each eye. And I don't like it. I'm lucky to have it. But I need to wear glasses. I need to... Bright light messes me up. Dark light messes me up. If there's too much action going on, that messes me up. So at that time, when I honestly, honestly God thought I was not going to keep my vision, I didn't renew my driving license. It would have been too much for me at that time to realize that I couldn't drive. So I pussied out. <laughs> I didn't renew my driving license, although my eye specialist tells me, and this is bizarre, that my vision is, beyond, is, is above the minimum standard for the DVLA. So as much as I don't like what I see, there are worse, there are people with worse vision than me driving cars in the UK. I believe you. <laughs> I think I met them on the road. I know, it doesn't make total sense. All these times you're behind someone and you're watching the crazy stuff that they do or you think, can they not see me? And the truth of the matter is, they probably, some of them can't see you. I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to reapply for my driving licence. Um, I like being a rider, not an or not. <laughs> no, I said, I said today is about riders but not. So we, we're not all not, because we're still riders in our hearts and everywhere, but we are but not at the moment. So how long you've been but not? How long? Because for me, it's over 50 days now. <laughs> I hit 50 days. Well, I can't believe it, but it's over three years for me. But that's been three years of lots of eye treatment, lots of other health stuff going on as well. And three years has flown in. Um, it was a shock to my system to read my old driving license and figure out when it actually expired. But I could be back on the road. And as long as I do it on my terms with, I'm not going to go out riding in terrible weather conditions. I'm not going to ride in at sunset times. I'm not going to ride in the dark. I'm going to become just a fair weather biker but oh, it will be so so good to get back on two wheels and I'm also not going to be able to ride like I used to I used to ride super bikes and I've 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 honed my skills to be doing things a couple of times faster than the speed limit and now I will be just happy to ride like Miss Daisy. I will be happy to bum, bimble along at the speed limit. What I have done in the three years and getting rid of my R1 is I have admitted defeat riding 200 brake horsepower super bikes and I bought myself my childhood dream bike. I... When I sold my R1, I had cash and I went and bought a 1991 GSXR 750 Suzuki, the M model. And when I was a little kid, when I was 12, that was a, a poster, a poster bike for me. And in my crazy type teenage bedroom, I had millions of posters. A large percentage of them were this particular bike. It just hit, hit, it hit a spot for me. So I hunted for one and I found a really original one. And it was a bit shabby. It was okay from 10 feet away. 
and I knuckled down when I've been off work and it's been my project bike in my garage and it has been the best therapy. It has kept me sane. I have just filled my time with staying involved in bikes. It's given me <clears throat> a gateway into old school Suzuki GXXR forums. I've ended up making loads of mates, having good conversations when my head's been buried in the sand. And, you know, it's amazing that I've been able to get included in a community based on an old Suzuki. An old Suzuki that's worth a, a few thousand pounds, you know? But they're a passion thing for a huge generation of motor bikers. And it's great to have tapped into that. And I love that there's lots of people with less mechanical skill than me getting an old turd of a GSXR and trying their best to modify it or restore it or just make it work. Well, I, I used to be an aircraft mechanic. So there's a lot of technical things that I, it's been so refreshing. It's been really awesome for me to be able to explain technical things to people who just don't get it, you know? And make sure they're using the right tool. Make sure they're using a, a technique. Make sure they're finding the right parts. Um, there's lots of amateur mechanics out there doing good on them. Good on you. Good on you. <laughs> it's so, so, it, it, it makes me so happy to see people rolling up their sleeves blindly diving in to projects that are pretty intimidating. There's, there's a lot of things there that, God, good on you, you know, and good on people. But know when to ask for help. Know when to pick up a phone and phone some old guy, some guy that's time-served engineer or mechanic, even if it's not bikes, you know. When it comes to getting stubborn nuts and bolts out or lots of things um reach out get on the right forum get on a 90s bike forum a classic bike forum a, a model specific forum and ask for help and before you know it you'll have some guy with too much time in his hands like me giving you a, a mobile number just because you're not riding anymore doesn't mean that you can't stay totally involved you know you don't need to have a bike to be a biker but what i would recommend to anyone who's not a rider anymore and i know that by reading the comments in your videos there are lots of more mature gentlemen who used to ride who don't at the moment people who are thinking about getting back involved in it what i would honestly recommend is get into the internet and find a heat version of a bike you love get a rough example get a crashed example take your time in the garage disassembling what you can manage sourcing parts cheap on ebay and facebook marketplace and in forums and big borrow and steal and give yourself motivation the more this bike's taking shape beside me um the more it's motivated me not to give up on driving and riding and that's been required at certain points of fighting poor health i'm going to get back into this i promised you that i would get my driving license reapplied for in january yeah and i've got about three days left <laughs> <laughs> so yeah actually at the beginning of a year when we last time spoke you sounded a little bit down and i said come on let's set up a deadline and a promise to me that you are reapplying for uh, your license when, when is it and you said this is the end of this month if you will apply at the beginning of next month 
I will excuse me because you you're doing steps towards it and sometimes it takes maybe longer than you planned so it's okay as soon as you're going as you're doing steps and do not procrastinating anymore because I know after three years it might be a little bit intimidating a lot intimidating especially when it is it is about your health is something that it it is out of your control very kind of you to give me a little bit of breathing space <laughs> but no i've procrastinated for far too long on this matter so i've got a load of online forms to fill out for the dvla and then i need to go to a post office and pester some lovely old lady to help me find the right forms and then I, as long as i've got those in an envelope sealed stamped and sent off by the end of this month and need deadlines i've got that will help me that will help me succeed in this it's just i wanted to let people know that here's another thing that when i knew we were going to talk about this time when i was thinking about all my biking mates and all the people that i would get a text from saturday morning where do you want to go and I realized I've lost touch with lots of them. There's lots of people that were friends of friends, people from a mate's work, people brought somebody's brother-in-law. I never got their full name. I know nicknames. I know the guy with the R1, the guy with the Ducati. <laughs> I might have forgotten their real names. I've got no way of getting in touch with them on Facebook or Instagram or ever had their mobile number because they were just always there. They would always arrive with someone else. And I regret not actually taking the time in a car park with a coffee, having a smoke, to say, can you give us your number, mate? Just in case, do you know? Because it's, it's, uh, it lifts me when, one, when I hear a bike roll up outside the house and I can tell whose bike it is and the garage door gets lifted and someone comes in and it's for a coffee and a pee and a chat and they're just back from a ride and they've wondered do you know how, how Tony's getting on and it means so much to actually just again I end up bloody <clears throat> fixing something on their bike <laughs> I, I end up you know helping them get their head around the problem or checking their suspension or bleeding their brakes. And that is brilliant. It's lovely to still be involved. And these people are saying, Christ, I, I never knew if it was okay to come to your house. Do you know, we've never, I, I, I didn't know your address. Someone told me where, where you lived. So get to know your bike buddies better. Because if someone's given up riding, something's going on in that person's life that's made them pull the plug, made them sell the bike. And it could be health stuff, horrible relationship stuff, job stuff, license stuff. Keep in touch with them because all sorts of shit could be crumbling for that person. And... Um, and it would, it means a hell of a lot when someone rolls up for a coffee and a chin wag and um, and gives me the motivation to get back into it. So, old guys, sick guys, riders or not, keep in touch with your riding pals, even when you've not seen them on a bike for a while. Riding a bike is the healthiest coping mechanism. It's the healthiest pastime. I think I've been down in the mental health doldrums because I'll, I quit my coping mechanism. What a dick. <laughs> so watch this space. We'll get it back on and I'll let you know how my first ride goes and I'll wrap myself in bubble wrap and back <laughs> protectors and full leathers um, 
My helmet's probably past its sell by the <laughs> Uh, but I'm so excited this summer there's going to be lots happening and I think it's going to be back in two wheels for me I hope that this episode helped everyone who is not for one or the other reason not riding at the moment it helped you guys to look forward to your riding days or if it is not very soon or maybe even never it helped you to feel closer and more of a rider not. And those of you who are lucky to ride every day, who has a weather good enough to ride and are healthy enough to ride and have nothing on the way for you to get on the motorcycle, maybe that episode will make you to think and be a little bit less judgmental when people say I haven't rode for a long time and will make you think that maybe it is a reason that you never had to experience and I hope that you will never have to. Thank you for watching. Ride us and not ride us. And I'll see you on the next one.